Okay, so here we have a 2010 Mitsubishi Colt and we have a check engine light. So I'm going to plug the code reader in. And put the ignition on. See what we get. Oh, don't erase the codes yet. Read codes. Okay, so we have this P0110 air intake temperature sensor circuit malfunction. Now, I've cleared this and it comes on straight away uh, again when you start the engine. So it's not something that intermittently happens or happens after a while, it's straight away. So from doing a bit of research online, it seems that this is the fella that we need to look at. Now you might notice it's already kind of clean. I actually took this one off and tried to uh, clean it and see did it make any difference. It made a slight difference to the performance. What's happening is that at about you know 100k when you're cruising on the dual carriageway, it can start to hesitate a little bit the odd time. Um, so it's my son's car. He said it improved it a little bit when I cleaned it. Um, but the engine code is still coming up, and the problem is still occurring as well with the hesitancy. So I'm going to replace this part. I have a new one that I've ordered, about 30 quid, 30 euros. And uh, I'm going to just replace it and hopefully that will fix the problem. It's very simple, just take this screw off, take out the um, connection here, and that's it. The part just pulls out. Um, this, I believe, has two functions, so the air, the intake air temperature and also the air pressure um, so it's, it's in this one unit so I'm going to replace that now and let's see how we get on so I've taken the part off the car this is the the one that was on the car and this is the new one now one thing I've noticed is this little kind of I don't know if you can see it, this little kind of yellow um, little plastic tip. I don't know how important this is for the part, <clears throat> but it's actually missing from the one that was on the car. So I don't know if that's just come off, gotten loose and, and come off, and if it also affects the performance of the thing. Um, it possibly does. But the other thing I've noticed is, I've just done a quick check with the multimeter and the resistance I'm getting uh, between pins one and two it's not showing anything on the multimeter here when I have this set to uh, 200 kilo ohms whereas on the other one I do get a reading um, so that would suggest to me that something is wrong with this one um, which is possibly causing my um, engine engine light to come on so I'm hoping that uh, just putting the new part in is going to is going to fix this so but it's just to let you know that quite often you can test these kind of sensors on multimeters and um, you know when you test the old one versus a, a good one or a new one you'll see different readings which kind of confirms that there's an issue with you know the broken one as such you know there, there's, a re there's a reason it's throwing an engine code uh, um, you're throwing your, your engine light and giving you a code is because it's getting a reading that doesn't make sense to the ECU on this, you know, on, on the broken component. So just something to bear in mind anyway. So I'll put the new the new component on now and see how we go. Okay, so I've put the, um, the new sensor in. I had a video recorded showing me erasing the code with the, um, the code reader. Uh, but 
it didn't record properly. Uh, I was talking to my phone and nothing else for about two minutes without the video recording. Anyway, I'll just show you. I had, uh, I've erased the codes and whereas the light was coming on straight away when I started the engine last time with the new sensor in, I'm gonna start it up now. And engine light gone. So that was coming on and staying on um, previously. So based on the the readings I was getting on the multimeter with the um, the old part, it looks like there was something wrong with the circuit there, which kind of tallies with the the engine code I was getting. So all good. Um, we'll obviously take the car for a quick spin and, and check it to make sure everything is all right. But certainly uh, it looks like it's solved the problem and. Um, Yep, that's that. Uh, just finally, just to add to this video, if you're looking for, for where the uh, the, uh, the code reader connection, the ODB uh, connection is on this car, on the Colt, it's just under here. Now this is obviously a right-hand drive car. I'm not actually sure where it would be on a left-hand drive, if it would be on the other side or still here. But anyway, this is where it is on a right-hand drive. You can only get at this by taking off the panel, but it's very easy to take off. Uh, not so easy to pull back on, unfortunately, but it's this panel here. It's this plastic panel, which kind of goes on here. Sorry, it's the wrong way around. Goes on, something like that, and there's two little, two little tabs under there that just, that just kind of hold that on. So I'll put that back on now, just to let you know how it hangs together. Uh, if you're looking for that, um, if you're looking for that connection. Alright, thanks.